So another example with Gauss's law, we're going to look at the infinite plane of charge. So over here, the blue parallelogram I have drawn represents an infinite plane of charge. It goes off in all directions. The plane has a uniform charge density given by sigma. And I ask you, what is the electric field some distance d away from this infinite plane of charge? So first things first, we need to draw a Gaussian surface. And I'm going to choose a cylindrical shape here. Uh, we'll see why in a second, but once, uh, once again, it's always symmetry. The cylindrical shape will introduce a symmetry into the problem that makes the math very, very simple. So let's get started with the math. First, I write out Gauss's law. E dot dA is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. But now for a cylinder, I notice that I can kind of break the problem down into separate pieces. So E dot dA is just the net flux going through the surface of the cylinder. So I can rewrite that as the flux going through the top, E top, A top, plus the flux going through the bottom, plus the flux going through the sides. And that all equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And now we can analyze each of these pieces individually. So let's first look at the flux going through the side, right? Now, let's try and envision what the electric field is going to look like in this situation. Will the electric field ever have any horizontal component? And if you take a step back and think about it, the answer has to be no. Well, why is that? Well, this is an infinite plane, right? There's no center point that we can draw on this plane. And thus, if there ever were a horizontal component of electric field, somebody else could rethink of the shape and just shift themselves along the field and cancel out our horizontal component. If this is a little bit hard to imagine, try and close your eyes and uh, think about where could you draw a center point on an infinite plane. And the answer is you really can't. There is no such thing as a center. So because of that, because there is no horizontal electric field component, the flux going through the side has to be zero. So I can cancel out that term and I just have the flux going through the top and the flux going through the bottom. Now let's look at these two terms. Well, I can draw my cylinder in such a way that it is a distance d above the plane and a distance d below the plane. And thus, the electric field at the top and the bottom have to be the same by symmetry. And additionally, this is a cylinder. And a cylinder, we know that the areas of the faces are the same. So instead of writing this as E top and E bottom, why don't I just write it as E, and instead of A top and A bottom, I'm going to write it as A. And now I have 2EA is Q enclosed over epsilon naught. The third thing that I want to do is take a look at that charge. Well, what is the Q enclosed by my cylinder? How much charge is actually being pierced by that cylindrical surface? Well, it's just going to be the charge density sigma times the area of a face of my cylinder. And now you can see that I can do just a little bit of simple math, rearrange everything, and I get E is sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught. So, first things first, we, didn't, uh, we don't always have to use spherical Gaussian surfaces when using Gauss's law. Here we used a cylinder, and it worked for us very well. In fact, if we tried to use a sphere here, we would have run into a lot of problems because a sphere just doesn't fit the type of symmetry in this problem. We can break the analysis into tiny pieces. That's what we did by looking at the top, the bottom, and the sides of the cylinder. And finally, we came up with a kind of a weird answer. Uh, the electric field doesn't depend on distance. So if you go 100 times farther away from that infinite surface, you're going to have the same electric field. And so I want you to take some time and think about it. Why, why would that make sense? What what property of this uh, charge distribution causes it such that it does not de uh, the electric field does not depend on distance? Uh, and I'll give you a hint. Uh, this is not a physical situation. We can't have an infinite plane of charge. So that might lead you in the right direction. 